the gray man, more like, more like, actually, no, gray, gray is a pretty, pretty good way of describing this movie's complete lack of personality. Maybe not anybody. The Grey Man is the latest outing from uh, MCU stalwarts, the Russo brothers, touted as being Netflix's most expensive film ever made. And does that money show up on screen? No. Doesn't. The Grey Man follows Ryan Gosling as Sierra Six, a former felon who has been recruited by the CIA to carry out sort of Black Ops style missions. And the film, he finds himself on the run from his own organization as they're trying to sort of cover their tracks. And he finds himself pursued by Lloyd, I think his name is, uh, played by Chris Evans with uh, what can only be described as a mustache. And uh, you've also got Anna de Armas in there as Gosling's partner and Jessica Henwick and a few other people popping in like Billy Bob Thornton and stuff. But really, it's sort of like a game of cat and mouse between Gosling and Evans. And that's the big draw card of this film. Ryan Gosling is absolutely one of my favorite actors. I love the man. I think he has so much more range than he's sometimes given credit for. And this is his first movie in like four years since First Man, which he was absolutely robbed of an Oscar nomination for, but that's neither here nor there. And uh, I'm very glad to have him back, but I just wish it was in a more interesting film because The Grey Man is, well, I don't think disappointment's the right word because I wouldn't say I was like hugely looking forward to it. It's... Uh, yeah, it was tough to get through. The Russo brothers, I'm starting to think, uh, maybe one of the few directors who are actually better at MCU committee-driven filmmaking because they really have made some of the best MCU films, in my opinion. I'm, you know, I'm not shy about saying I'm a big, big fan of Endgame and The Winter Soldier, but their outings outside of it have just been, it's like they have no identity. And based on some of their comments about how they think the cinema experience is elitist and how they think streaming movies are the future. It's just, it's kind of disheartening um, that attitude because this movie really, it's not a fun movie. It's an imitation of a fun movie and it's an imitation of action films gone before. It's bootleg Michael Mann. It's bootleg Michael Bay. It's bootleg John Wick. It has all of the pieces that are supposed to be in a fun action spy thriller, but with none of the fun or personality, it really is just two hours of an incoherent narrative where characters who aren't really characters, they're just beige exposition machines as we move from gray set piece to gray set piece with incoherently filmed action, an occasional unfunny default action movie one-liner quip, and a bunch of great actors phoning it in. I really couldn't find much uh, redeeming about The Grey Man. I didn't enjoy it at all. Chris Evans kind of puts himself in Razzie territory here. I love the man, but he, uh, you know, he plays this sort of hammy villain and uh, it doesn't go too well. I will say the script does him no favors. Um, the dial, there's some pretty, pretty not great dialogue in this thing. Anna de Armas, who I love, and I'm very excited to see her have her own like leading action performance because she was a lot of fun in No Time to Die. She's given pretty much nothing to do here. Jessica Henwick has nothing to do in this. Um, Ryan Gosling, who he probably comes out the winner here, but at the same time, I think it's one of the weaker performances of his career. And he's sort of gone back to that just stoic, cool guy, except he just, he looks bored. He looks like he's sleepwalking the entire time. You know, he's still fun to see on screen and he's, uh, he's pretty jacked. Uh, if you're into that, but he just, I don't know. The, I felt like there's a narrative in here where they could have tapped into his comedic talents. You know, this could have been a fun, just over the top cat and mouse action movie, but it really just comes down to that attitude they have towards filmmaking, this algorithm based filmmaking where they're trying to make stuff designed for streaming services. And I really think I'm about ready to give up on streaming action movies because they just, they're all the same. And I don't know where the money for this went. I know a large chunk of it would have gone towards paying the stars, but it just, ev everything in it looks so fake. Every action sequence looks the same. It's always obscured by like fog to hide the bad VFX. Half of it's just underlit. You can't see what's happening. Um, 
there wasn't a single fun action sequence. There was a bit on a train that was kind of cool. But other than that, there wasn't really a single fun action sequence. There were some fun moments of chemistry between Gosling and young Julia Butters, but there was just few and far between. And I really, really hated the experience of watching this film. And um, if the Russo brothers keep getting shit like this funded, it is kind of a a sad harbinger for what's to come from the film industry, um, especially with their attitude towards um, wanting to destroy the cinema experience. Because to me, the cinema is a sacred place and I really don't want that to go away. I'm sick of talking about this movie. The Grey Man, I am giving The Grey Man a two out of 10. I absolutely hated it. I know some people found it fun and it's fun to see like actors we love on screen, but I just think we need to be doing better, especially with the amount of money this costs, the amount of actual like good original movies, you, even action movies. You could have made like three decent action movies for this budget. It's just a complete waste of talent and resources. And I kind of hated every single second of it. And unless you're just such a huge fan of these actors that you have to see it, it or if, I don't know, you just, I don't really recommend this one. If you're on the fence about seeing it, I think you can probably give it a miss because it doesn't do anything that any of these other streaming actioners haven't already done. So that's my review of The Grey Man. Let me know what you thought about it. Was I being too harsh? I don't know. I'm just kind of getting sick of these kinds of films. And I think we stuff like Mission Impossible and John Wick proves that you can do this shit well. It just takes effort and planning and I don't know. I don't know what it takes. You know, I've, could I do any better? I don't know, but just I'm sick of it. Follow me on Letterboxd and Instagram. Stay tuned for more videos. I know I've kind of been slowing down on the reviews lately, but it's been a busy time and really there hasn't been a lot out lately. I'm kind of waiting for August when we start getting stuff like bullet train and nope and everything. Cause yeah, it's been, it feels like it's been a dry month or two for great new releases. And it's just been a lot of this mediocre franchise stuff that keeps coming out, but, uh, stay tuned. I am going to be heading over to Melbourne next month for the Melbourne film festival. So I'm going to be seeing a lot of stuff there, a lot of exciting, uh, anticipated foreign films and indies and stuff. So, I don't know if I'll be reviewing everything I see because I'll be seeing a lot, but I, maybe I'll be doing some recaps of what I see at the festival. So stay tuned for all of that. Uh, finally going to get back into seeing a bunch of stuff. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Don't watch The Grey Man. It sucks.